four Australian states. Authorities believe the decision of residents to flee their homes has saved lives. But that has caused a significant increase in the number of homes lost in 2015, which was close to 300, compared to the previous year of just 33. Lucas Fonten has a look at our changing approach to bushfires. It's become an all too common occurrence across Australia. Some are bushfires causing widespread destruction. And after the destruction come the promises to rebuild. We will stand with you. We will be there for you to provide the support necessary to rebuild. But experts say rebuilding should only be done if science proves it's safe to do so. Some places you would argue are probably not defendable at all and you would have to question whether, whether it's the right thing to do to rebuild. A snapshot of five major fires in 2015 alone shows the devastating toll. A total of 235 homes were destroyed with six lives lost. 27 homes were burnt out when fast moving fires ripped through the Adelaide Hills in January. Soon after, 95,000 hectares of land was scorched in rural Western Australia. In November, another devastating fire left four people dead and 17,000 hectares burnt. Then 91 homes were destroyed in South Australia and two people were killed. No lives were lost in the most recent fires along Victoria's Great Ocean Road, but 116 homes were. Yes, we've got lots of houses to rebuild, but there are no funerals to go to. That success is being put down to lessons learnt out of the 2009 Black Saturday fires in Victoria. In the wake of those deadly fires, many residents are now choosing to not take a risk, fleeing rather than staying to protect their homes, and that's leaving property to the mercy of nature. We are seeing an increase in, in number of houses lost, but that is a, an inevitable uh, consequence of the of people leaving early. It's an example of the life-saving change in attitude by residents. At the end of the day, as long as we don't lose lives, the house doesn't matter. But as those towns look to rebuild, those lessons will force them to meet new bushfire-conscious building standards. Clearly, the cost of compliance with the new building standards is much higher than just rebuilding what was there before. Along the Great Ocean Road, like other bushfire-prone areas, Many of the homes in the affected area are older and therefore don't or didn't comply with the new building standards. We know that over 92% of houses are lost through ember attack in a bushfire, so there's a lot of practical and um, inexpensive ways to repair property. That includes ember-proof fly screens and protective window shutters. Governments, insurance firms and councils are being urged to consider possible incentives. We've got to really flip around our investment strategy in disaster resilience from one of suppression and recovery to prevention. It's a strategy that authorities hope will pay off in the long run. Every investment we put into risk mitigation saves the heartache and the property destruction and perhaps lives. A heartache that's all too real for those now returning to their homes along the Great Ocean Road. Lucas Fonten, ABC News. Now our